Okay, so in this video we are looking at something called the so-called Flat Earth Theory. Um, yeah, so a number of people on the internet genuinely now think the world is actually flat. Uh, as stupid as this sounds, we have to ask what on earth does this have to do with maths? Well, many things actually. One being that we have numerous amount of mathematical proven theories relating to gravity. Flat Earth believers seem to think um, gravity doesn't exist. <laughs> um, sorry, excuse me for laughing. They think it has something to do with density and buoyancy. Uh, but of course, we know this supposed theory is incorrect because it simply cannot explain real world results. And you know, from experiments relating to, uh, say, a mass inside a vacuum and, and objects reach, reaching terminal velocity. Um, anyway, we will come back to gravity in the future. So to start, you know, we'll say um, flat Earth believers claim the sun does not set and say there is a sort of localized lighting pattern going on. As silly as this sounds, people out there genuinely believe this. Um, so as you can see from this picture, they believe the sun is uh, very close and it rotates around like a little torchlight. Um, but of course this is silly for so many reasons. Uh, number one, the torchlight argument makes no sense. We all know the light wouldn't form that particular shape. But more crucially, just because we are not underneath the light, it doesn't mean we wouldn't be able to see the source of this light with the naked eye or a telescope or otherwise. Um, consider um, a, you know, a very dark street. Even though you may be in complete darkness, say there or there, you can still see the source of the light. Number two, we know the sun actually sets because we can witness two sunsets from the same spot. Um, the Burj Khalifa is the tallest structure in the world and you can witness two sunsets. If you witness the first one and then get an escalator to the top, um, you, know, you, can, you can see another one. Um, and you know this is further proof that the localized lighting is complete nonsense. I mean you can re read read up on this. You know, there's a lot of sort of articles on the internet. Uh, number three, um, as you can see from uh, you know the real Earth, at any one time, one face of the entire planet Earth is in sunlight because that is the side that is facing the sun. And you know we have made numerous observations of places around the world to actually prove this. So this picture here shows sunlight at a, sp a specific time as factual observations. You know, I have roughly translated uh, this into the flat earth map. Here, so I've just, you know, geography wasn't my strongest, but I've just roughly translated the, this. Yeah, and you know, because this particular flat Earth map is a, is a 3D projection onto a 2D space, you know, it is uh, as expected that exactly half of the world is in sunlight at any given time. So this does further rule out this localized lighting theory. Before we move on to the last point of this video, we have to consider there has been no evidence for the flat earth ever presented, no pictures of the flat earth, no pictures of any dome, no pictures of edges, no scientific tests or, or conclusions, and no pictures of, of, of the ice wall surrounding the earth. Even though if this were true, we should be very easily be able to find these these things, you, you know, using basic you know telescopes and, and ships as, you know, as transport. So, to the last point in this video, um, it is about distances. Uh, distances on the flat Earth and in the globe Earth have to be exactly the same. And, uh, you know, this is agreed by both parties. We know distances are correct because we use GPS to make maps based on the globe Earth. You know, consider Google Maps, Google Earth, 
we can use their directions to very accurately arrive at our destinations and the speeds and times based on their globe earth based map no one has ever used google navigation to uh, go from say london to the nurburgring in germany and then they've arrived in france you know that's not something that happens however this works very well with the globe earth but causes huge mathematical discrepancies uh, with the flat earth okay so consider consider this south african airways fly direct from perth to johannesburg in in 10 hours and 45 minutes um, unfortunately no wi-fi is offered and there is no in seat power um, but I'm sure our uh, trustworthy friends at South African Airways are, are working on it. The distance from Perth to Johannesburg is 5165 miles. And it, as we uh, can see or establish that it takes 10 hours and 45 minutes, uh, which in minutes is 645 minutes. Um, so if you divide through by 645 times it by 60 and this gives us a, a, an, an average speed of 480 miles per hour approximately throughout the journey um, and the top speed of uh, this aircraft uh, which is this, this, this model here is 567 miles per hour so taking all factors into consideration you know this verifies Quite nicely it works out so what does this mean on a flat earth okay since we know distances are the same and of course they have to be we can use longitude and latitude coordinates to assist us um, I have retrieved the coordinates for Perth and Johannesburg. You can see them here on this side of the screen. And I've got the distance using an online calculator. And I've just um, thrown, uh, you know, this, so I'm taking the distance from the North Pole to Perth and from the North Pole to um, Johannesburg. And I've put in the coordinates of the North Pole into this and Perth and Johannesburg respectively to give me a distance so I've labeled that in this this diagram here so we know the distance from the North Pole to Perth is 8425 miles and the distance from the North Pole to Johannesburg is 8021 miles I have subtracted the longitudes to give the angle between the two points so this angle beta here is Two plus minus that from that, uh, which which gives us eighty seven point four. Let's move up. Eighty seven point four, um, approximately. That is the angle in degrees. So I'm interested in this length here, which I've labelled alpha. And if we recall, the cos rule will allow us to work out this result. So I've stated the, the cos rule here and I've substituted in the, the values and I've worked through, I, you know, I've used my calculator um, to get alpha squared and if we square root both sides um, we get 11366 miles. So we're saying um, alpha here is approximately 11,000 miles. And this, of course, is a complete contradiction uh, because we know the distance is, you know, less than half. is about 5,100 miles. You know, it's, it's a complete contradiction. Furthermore, the distance cannot be um, 11366 miles because we know this aircraft flies direct. And uh, this would mean it would have to travel at something like, 1057 miles per hour to achieve a flight time of 10 hours and 45 minutes.
So this is clearly and obviously nonsense, and we have shown this without any doubt. So um, that is it for the first video of the series, mathematically debunking the supposed flat earth theory. Anyway, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.